It's focusing on my voice and picking it up very clearly. Today we have the newer NW82 condenser microphone kit, which is a multifunctional microphone because it does have two different modes. We have a hypercardioid pattern that's going to be great for a studio environment like this or a boom situation when you're recording a movie and you need to capture audio from a bit of a distance or a normal mode where you can actually use it as an interviewing microphone like if you're on the news and you want to interview somebody back and forth. That's actually pretty nice because you can use this for different functions depending on what you're trying to do for the day. It it looks very nice. It's a 14 inch condenser microphone kit, so it is rather large. So I'm hoping for some good audio quality. But then again, the price is very low. So there's a chance that this can be a great and expensive microphone. Nice looking packaging. This actually looks kind of cool. It's not a case, it's more of a box because I don't think you would actually use this. I guess you could but it's not like anything professional. Inside the box, we do have an instruction manual, a dead cat, an XLR to 3.5 millimeter connector, a mounting bracket, an XLR to 6.35 millimeter cable, a quarter thread mount, as well as the microphone itself with the windscreen pre-installed. Let's take the microphone out of the plastic, and this is, wow, it's made out of metal, nice and cold to the touch, feels very solid, very nice quality microphone. Now keep in mind this is an XLR microphone. You did see the two XLR cables that were included. Although I was surprised to see it didn't come with an XLR to XLR cable. Only cables that plug directly into a device. Because you can actually use this with a single AA battery if you don't want to use phantom power. But you can use phantom power instead of a AA battery if you don't want to have to worry about that. But I guess in that case you need to provide your own XLR cable. I guess for the price it makes sense, but really they should have included one. Now taking a look at the microphone, we do have the side pickup area for when you're using it in tele mode, and then we have the top pickup area when you're using it in normal mode. Over here in the middle, we do have an LED indicator light so you know you have power along with the different options. We have off, normal, and tele mode. As you can see, we do have different pickup patterns depending on which mode you choose. Now keep in mind, if you are using 48 volt phantom power, do remove the AA battery that's inside because you're not gonna need it and things could go horribly wrong. I'm not sure if they will, but you know, better safe than sorry. Now luckily I do have my own XLR cable ready to go, so I'm gonna just get this plugged in, just like so, and now I'm connected to 48 volt phantom power. We're gonna get this thing powered on to normal mode. We do have an LED indicator light, so we know we have power. Just like that, we are switched over to the newer mic. I have it about a fist away from my mouth, and I have the gain set at 20% and the output set at 75% on my mixer. So this is raw and unedited what you're going to get. Now, as I was getting this set up, I did realize this microphone is extremely sensitive. That's why I have the gain so low because otherwise it was just peaking like crazy and sounding so bad. But that's, I guess, a good thing because you can use this for different situations if you need an ultra sensitive microphone. But you just gotta keep that in mind. If you have this too high, your audio is gonna be useless and it's gonna be a waste of time. You're not gonna have any usable footage. But with that being said, we're in normal mode right now and I'm talking at a regular speaking voice and we're gonna actually do a scream test real quick. Five, four, three, two, one. Oh my God, guys, Bigfoot, go take your cameras over there. Go, go, go. That's what happens if you're recording somebody who's screaming into the microphone because they're freaking out. Now with that being said, I'm gonna switch over to tele mode, which is the hypercardioid pattern, and it's better for use when you're using it as a boom mic. And when I was testing that out, I didn't notice that was even more sensitive, so you have to be very careful if the microphone's too close. So I'm gonna switch right now. And as you can see, I'm talking a bit quieter right now because I don't wanna peek it, but now I'm talking at a regular speaking voice. It might sound bad. And now we're gonna do a scream test, but I'm gonna hold it a little bit away from me. Five, four, three, two, one. Oh my God, guys, Bigfoot, go! It's like if you're filming a horror movie and people are screaming because they're scared. And I'm gonna switch back to normal mode. And we're back in normal mode. And as I turn, you can see it starts getting rid of my vocals because it's further away from the tipping point right here at the top. So very sensitive microphone, very good quality. So, so far the build quality does feel high quality and it does feel very sensitive. But now we're gonna do the blowing test in case you're out in windy conditions. And now we're gonna put on the windscreen. And hopefully it blocked out some of that wind noise, which it obviously should have because they usually work pretty well. And then we have the dead cat, which I really like because it's so big. Let's see if I can put this on. 
this is actually hard to put on. All right, we got the dead cat on and it's a very tight fit, but you're probably gonna wanna use something like this when you're using tele mode specifically for sure. And I will do the blow test. And now I'm gonna actually turn it to tele mode. So now we're in tele mode, which is boom mic mode, and we're gonna do the blow test. And hopefully it sounds good. But now I'm gonna actually get this set up as a boom mic because that's how I feel like a lot of people are gonna be using this, especially me. I'm not gonna be using it like this because doesn't make sense. I got this to use as a boom mic. All right, and now I have it set up in tele mode as a boom mic directly in front of me, right on top of the camera, and you can definitely see it in the shot right now because I just threw it up there. I didn't have time to mount it up perfectly, but this is roughly where I would have it. But as you can probably tell, I'm a bit quiet, so I'm definitely gonna have to raise up the gain a bit because I'm so far away. So right now we're at about 50% gain, and it looks like it's being very, very sensitive right now. I'm actually going into the red quite a bit, and I'm still talking at a regular speaking voice. So just keep that in mind. This thing is appearing to be very sensitive. I'm gonna go back down to a roughly 30 to 40% gain right now, and it's in the green, maybe a little bit higher. See, hello, 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 hello. This is yeah, it's still going in the red when I start <laughs> raising my voice a bit. So this thing is extremely sensitive, which is good if you're using it as a boom mic. You want something sensitive. I just hope it sounds clear and crisp and like it's not, what, about three feet away from me? Because it needs to sound like it's a lot closer and it's like it's right in front of me without actually being right in front of me. So let me see. Let me turn it down a little bit more. And this is pretty much what it'll sound like when I'm doing unboxing. For example, we got this XLR cable, we got this other XLR cable, but we don't have an XLR to XLR cable, which was very weird, so I had to provide my own. But then again, this microphone is extremely cheap, so I guess they had to cut costs somewhere. But one of the cool things is, we do have a windscreen along with that dead cat, depending on what look you're going for or what you're trying to do with the microphone. I always prefer to use the dead cat if I can, although in this situation, it would probably make sense to not use the dead cat because there's no wind in here, and also it's getting in the shot of the camera because it is so close. Now, I just took a listen to this recording, and it does appear that this mixer is a little bit useless with this microphone because it keeps saying that I'm peaking, although when I listened to it, it sounded fine. So I'm not sure what's going on there. You got to just listen to it and tweak it using your ears and don't use what you see on the mixer going up and down because when it's going in the red, it still sounded great. So I'm not sure what's up with that. It does sound loud, crisp, and clear, but now we're actually going to do the scream test. We're at about 50% gain and 75% output. Five, four, three, two, one. Oh my god, you guys! I can't believe it! This product is fantastic! Now, although on my end it did show that it was peaking quite a bit in my scream test, and even right now when I'm talking it goes into the red, although I feel like I may lower it just a tad bit because it is a bit up there and I want to have a bit of a roof so I can always raise the volume up without it being distorted. So right now I just lowered it a little bit. We're going to do one more scream test. Five, four, three, two, one. Oh my God, guys, this is fantastic. It's red, but it doesn't appear to be distorting, which is good. So, of course, like I was saying, you do have to listen to it and tweak everything while you're setting everything up instead of going by a visual cue like this. It's best to have a sound engineer doing everything live while everything is happening so everything can be right and on point. Now as far as this microphone goes, it does a very good job as a boom mic because it is super sensitive and it can pick you up from a great distance away. The problem is if you want to actually use it as a handheld microphone, it's very hard because it peaks quite a bit and you have to have the volume extremely low. So I feel like this was mainly a boom microphone where they're like, you know what, we can have an option to turn off these microphones on the side and that way you can sell it as a dual function microphone. But in my opinion, this is definitely a boom microphone and if you're looking for a boom microphone, this is definitely a good option. If you're, using, if you're looking for a handheld option, just get a dedicated handheld microphone and you'll probably be a lot happier in the long run because it's made to use like that. Now, one of the things I notice about this is it looks like a shotgun microphone, but it's not really a shotgun microphone because a shotgun microphone only captures from the front and it cancels out from the sides. So if you're in an untreated room, it actually bounces your sound, your voice actually bounces off the walls and back into it and it tries to cancel it out on the sides, but this microphone's picking it up from all the directions in tele mode. But since I'm facing directly at me, I feel like I could get away with using normal mode. So, so I just switched it back to normal mode. Let me 
I think I might have to raise the volume up a tad bit because like I was saying when it was in normal mode and I was holding it in my hand it was much too close to my face and you had to keep the volume all the way down otherwise it was peaking like crazy so in normal mode facing me directly like this so this might be the way to go if you're using this in a studio environment like this and you're just gonna be sitting still right in front of it now remember if you're using it as a boom microphone like you're recording a movie and you're holding it up to get the best audio experience so you know you just got to listen to each different option and see what works best for your situation <laughs> well that just settles it we're in normal mode I just listened to a sample of normal mode and tele mode as this boom microphone setup that I have right now and I can definitely tell you this is perfect for this situation. And this sounded great. It sounded way better than Telemode. It sounded great. It's very loud, didn't peak. Now I'm gonna have to do a scream test to make sure. Five, four, three, two, one. Oh my God, this product is fantastic. I may need to drop it down just a tad bit, but it sounded great. Didn't really distort. One more scream test. Five, four, three, two, one. Wow, I can't believe this microphone's so sensitive. And to be honest, it sounds very good considering the microphone's about three feet away from me. It's focusing on my voice and picking it up very clearly. Very impressive, very sensitive, and I can definitely do an unboxing. Like we got this XLR cable right here, this other XLR cable, but no regular XLR cable. What were they thinking? I don't know because right now I'm using an XLR to XLR cable but it didn't come with it. These cables, I'm not even using them. Of course you could use these if you put a battery in there, but I don't like to have to deal with batteries because I, don't, I forget to charge it, the microphone's dead, and guess what, don't have a microphone. But all in all, I can definitely recommend this microphone if you need it for a studio environment like this or even as a boom microphone. Like I said, don't use it as a handheld microphone. You can if you really have to, but I would definitely not recommend it. But I would definitely recommend using normal mode for a situation like this because it does sound loud, crisp, and clear. And it's picking me up very well even though it's three feet away from me. You guys let me know what you think of the audio quality and if you decide to pick up one of these. There's all different kinds of microphones depending on what you're using. I would just definitely not recommend this as a handheld microphone. But right now, I'm very impressed with how this sounds given the setup that I have right here. You just gotta tweak the volume to match your situation and you'll be good to go with some clean audio coming from this very inexpensive microphone. Okay.